Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed edition of This Week in Weather. However, this is a special edition on this Friday evening. We'll be talking about the potential for a major East Coast snowstorm, March 5th, 6th, or 7th, somewhere along the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic, New England, what have you. And uh, that's what we're going to be, that's what the term MEX refers to, major East Coast snowstorm, or HEX, uh, you know, the other term over here, which is historic East Coast snowstorm. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm your host, meteorologist DT, all-around snappy dresser and intellectual powerhouse and extremely witty person. So we'll sit right to it and take a look what's going on here. Well, uh, first, we're going to be talking about, obviously, whether or not this is uh, going to be a Virginia, Maryland, or Delaware, West Virginia event, or a snowstorm of significance for Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York City, and southeastern Massachusetts, or some combination thereof. There's still possibilities out there. We'll also be showing why we should use ensembles, uh, especially this time of frame, and what could change, and intangibles. So let's get right to it. Lots to talk about. This is the. Uh, G we'll start out by taking a look at the models from February 28th. This is Thursday morning, and uh, I posted this on the Facebook page, and this is a good map here, so I decided to use it rather than create a new one, and uh, we can see this is the blocking feature. See it right there? That's the huge block. That is the negative NAO. That's what it actually looks like. A lot of you folks look at graphs. This is the, this is the actual map of manifestations of what those graphs look like. So there we go. And here's the 50-50 low, southeast Canada. So this feature here, see it, has to go underneath it, okay? It cannot do this. It cannot go into those features. So sure enough, it drops down, then it drops down, and the GFS drops it off the Savannah Coast, which is just ludicrous. That's just the classic GFS. The model's a piece of crap. Always will be. Uh, I guess it's just always going to be that way when it comes to East Coast storms this far out. Ugh, it's a piece of crap. Okay, next slide. And this is the European model from early on, early on uh, Thursday morning. Now, the European model, make sure I got this right. Yeah, the European model... Uh, developed a much bigger system. And this has got, first got people a lot excited showing a big system here, and it wraps it up. Now, look what happens here. Why doesn't the European take this system up the coast? Because the block up in here, see this big block, and we can see the feature right in there. It can't do that. So as a result, what happens is the system develops a negative tilt. See that northwest to southeast? Northwest, southeast. That's the negative tilt. When the upper level energy at the jet stream, the 500 millibar, develops that tilt, the system goes boom when it reaches the east coast, and that's how you get your big, powerful east coast snowstorms. That's what happened in the blizzard back in February 8th. That's what happened in the big snowstorms in Washington, D.C., 2010, uh, the other big storm back in 2011. So this is very classic, something we look for as meteorologists to tell us that the system is about to get, become uh, explosively deepened and becoming a major event. So that's what the European is showing here. Now, this is a detailed map of the European uh, centered on North Carolina, Virginia from Storm Vista. Thank you very much, guys. And you can see the huge amounts of snow here, very impressive looking maps. And you can see just huge amounts of snow everywhere. <clears throat> and this is the actual snow map. I mean, look at this. Wow. This came out again Thursday morning, right? Thursday morning. And now, as you can see, it's got huge amounts of snow up in here in Charlotte, in, in, in Farmville, and in Roanoke, Lynchburg, out towards Bristol, and even a decent snow into, into Richmond, up towards D.C. But notice, no snow up in here. Why isn't there snow going up there? There's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a second. This is the GFS on Thursday afternoon. Suddenly, the GFS is getting a clue. Look, it comes much better. Now it's coming north. You got snow into into, uh, into Virginia towards Maryland here a little bit. Uh, the lows beginning to deepen, and the models beginning to see it a little bit. This isn't about, not bad for the GFS. There's a blocking feature. It's a 50-50 low, and this piece of energy. It's in Indiana. The other models end up having it down, it down here, but that's the GFS for you, and it goes underneath it. It cannot do this. That's wrong. So that's one of the reasons why it can't come off the coast. It's having trouble. This is the GFS. We want to compare, okay, the operational GFS versus the ensembles to see if it makes sense. Here's a regular GFS. See it? This is the ensemble. See it? These are very close. See the low? See the low here? Very close. Good snow all up in here. Good snow all up in here. Now, notice the low does not pass Hatteras. Okay? Most of us know where Cape Hatteras is, right? Okay, if you don't, Stop listening to me. Go back to high school. 
And there's the uh, Cape Hatteras point right here. The low pass is south and east of it. Important point for folks in New England. There are very few cases of snowstorms, a big coastal storms, passing south and east of Cape Hatteras, which end up hitting New England with significant snow. It doesn't happen a lot. Keep that in mind. This is the Thursday afternoon European model. Now look what the European model does here. This is interesting. The European model brings it up towards Hatteras. The snow gets in the southeast of Virginia. Then look what it does. It goes back south. Why does it do that? Because of the blocking feature up in here. That's what it's doing. That's what the model's telling us. Okay. This is the GFS from early Friday morning. Okay. So this is now, um, this is now, let me call it up here. March 1, early Friday morning. This is from 1 a.m., okay? This morning, Friday morning. Got it? There's, there was, there's the old low. See it? Now it's over by South Carolina. There's South Carolina. So the GFS is coming north. Okay, good. Finally getting a clue. That's encouraging. Why? Because look what the GFS is doing again. Here's a piece of energy. Remember how the GFS before had it over Indiana? Now look where it is. Alabama. Oh, yes, I see that. The system's developing. It's very strong. It's developing a neutral tilt. There's the blocking feature. Monster block up in here. Here's our 50-50 low. And sure enough, what happens in the next frame? Boom! Remember this? Negative tilt. Remember how the... Uh, Negative tilt there. See it? See right there? Same thing. That's pretty good agreement. Not bad between the models. That's good. Okay, let's move back up where we were. Okay. And now what we want to do is want to compare again the operational and the ensemble. Let's see if they work together. Okay? So, the operational early Friday morning GFS from 1 a.m. show this piece of crap way out here, this funny looking thing. This is silly. I don't know what this is doing here. This is just ridiculous. This is the ensemble east of Hatteras. See that? Here it's east-northeast of Hatteras. And again, we have pretty good snow in this general area. But look at the precip maps. Again, look, all the precip passes stays out of Virginia, out of Philly, out of Baltimore, just goes up to New York City and to Connecticut. Do you think that's really going to happen? I mean, come on. And sure enough, when we look at the GFS ensemble, look at this. Much better, more uniform precip shield. Okay, so these do not agree. No, this does not agree. This tells me the GFS should be avoided. The 1 a.m. Friday morning GFS is not correct. Got it? Okay. Now this is the European. Let's take a look at the European. Now this is this was Thursday afternoon on February 28th. This is 1 a.m. Friday morning. Look at the difference. It was here. See it? Now it's here. That's a huge shift in 12 hours. Well, maybe the Europeans right. I mean, maybe it is coming that far north. Okay, let's take a look. See, let's take a look at the ensemble. No, the Europe, the ensemble says no. This is not correct. See the lows here over the Del Mar, the Chesapeake Bay, driving warm air into Philly, into Jersey, up towards New York City. Then the lows out here, 300 miles much further. Not here, here. Okay, no. This is completely wrong. Okay? Yes. No. It's that simple. Really, it's not more complicated than that. That's what the ensembles are used for. Here's the snowfall map. We can see very good snows, decent snow by Richmond, heavy snows up by Charlottesville, Winchester, Front Royal, up into central Maryland towards D.C., uh, Harrisburg, Lancaster, northwest of Philly, up to, up to northwest New Jersey, close to New York City. That's, that's, that's very reasonable. That's a good snowfall map. i got no problem with that one. It's just that the operation, the ensemble doesn't support it. Now, this is the Canadian. Now, a lot of people ignored the Canadian early Friday on Thursday. And the low is, look where the low is, up here north of Detroit. But suddenly, now the Canadian gets a clue and it drops the low by Virginia. People go, oh, the Canadian's coming north. It isn't coming north, it came south. The fact that you happen to ignore the Canadian from Thursday and from Wednesday doesn't mean that the system's coming south. This is coming north at all. The system came southward this way. And the model's beginning to get a clue. So that's the whole point. This is what got me a little upset with some people, assuming that the Canadian is bringing the system north. It's not. It came south. You have to follow the models all the time, not just the ones that give you snowstorms. Okay. Now, this is the uh, GFS from, um, 
I guess this would be from, yeah, from today, actually. This is the 1 o'clock GFS one. 1 o'clock Friday. Here we go. There's the big system. Now the rain-snow line. Remember the thick black, blue line here? This is rain-snow in here. See this? Up through Richmond, up towards Salisbury, like that. And now what happens is that the model actually drives warm air in towards Philly, New York City, goes over to rain, Long Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Philly. But this is cold air coming in here. So now D.C. is all snow, Richmond's all snow, Eastern Virginia's all snow again. That's what the GFS is showing. Okay, maybe that's correct. Let's take a look at it. Now, this is the upper air maps from uh, the folks at NSEP. And again, we can see very clearly, very nicely here. There's the block. See it right there? Boom. There's our feature. It's dropping down this way. Okay, so far so good. And then it goes boom. There's our negative tilt. That explains why the model developing such a strong system. Here's our blocking feature. Okay, so far so good. No problems. But when we compare the regular GFS to the ensembles, here we go. Regular versus the ensemble. What do we see? The low, look at this, is by Wallops Island. See the strong southeast winds, the heavy snows inland. But look at the ensemble mean. No, it's not up here. It's down in here. Very different. This is all snow in here, folks, according to the GFS ensemble. So again, this is not a match. No, 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 no. This tells me the 12Z GFS on Friday afternoon is not correct. Next slide. This is the Canadian Friday afternoon. It's got the low parked over D.C., heavy snow over western and northwestern Virginia, into Maryland, into Pennsylvania. That's a possibility, but I don't think it's correct. I think that the Canadian is still playing catch up here. This is the British model. Now the British model just pounds the hell out of North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, West Virginia, and Virginia with a huge snowstorm. But it doesn't come up the coast. Why? Because of the blocking feature. Here's the block. I call this up here. Here's the blocking feature in here. There's the 50-50 low, so the system has to go this way. It cannot come north. That's what the British model is showing. Got it? Okay. Now here's the afternoon European. The system goes kablooey, uh, parked off the Delmarva coast. Huge amounts of snow here. We can see, I posted this map on the Facebook page earlier. You can see the huge snows coming in this way. Just a tremendous amount of snows like this. And this is why. See, like in this way. And there you can see it. Notice, no snow in New England. Why? Because the system goes this way. It does. We'll take a look, see. And we can see, again, we compare the regular to the ensemble, right? We want to do that, see if they match. Okay. And what happens? This is the, this is the low here. There's the low ensemble. Yes, bingo, we have a match. Yes, bingo, we have a match. Yay. Okay. This, of course, is a lot of snow in this area, all up into this area here, potentially. So, now, this could change, right? Well, sure, but why is the low not coming all the way up the coast? What's causing that? The point here is that if you're thinking the models could change, it could come north. You've got to be careful. Remember, weather systems do not move north because the weather model shows it's moving north, or south, or east, or west. It's moving north because the weather model reflects the atmosphere. They do not drive the atmosphere. So when the weather model is taking the systems constantly off the coast, there's a reason for that. This is our summary. Only the 12Z operational GFS on Friday came north and put heavy snow into the northeast U.S. The 12Z GFS ensembles did not. Okay? The 12Z GFS takes it east-northeast out to sea. The Canadian came south. The 12Z Yukma came way south and takes it out to sea. And the 12Z European takes low up to the Delmarva and then turns it east and then east-southeast off the coast. And so does the European Ensemble. That's what the trends have been today. What about the 18Z GFS? Well, let's look at the stats. This shows us which are models here are the stats. Basically, what you want to look at here is... Um, the uh, higher the number, the worse it is. So this is for North America, okay? And this is the error for the GFS cycle. The highest number here, the 18Z GFS and the 6Z GFS. And if you look at the Northern Hemisphere, it's always the 18Z and the 6Z. Much higher numbers than the regular 0Z or 12Z runs. This is a comparison, again, of the uh, GFS cycles. The lower the number here, the more accurate it is. There's the European, the best number. Again, 44.4, and the 6Z, again, the highest. So once again, we see that the 6Z and the 18Z GFS are demonstrably less and more likely to be error-prone than the 0Z and the 12Z GFS. And there we go. That's, the, that's our, my update. We'll see what happens this weekend. I'm DT. I'll talk to you soon.